On the Republican side, outreach and widespread reaction. Donald Trump aggressively seeking support from new constituencies and stepping up attacks on his opponent's email server troubles. He's hitting the campaign trail this week in Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida, all very important states. Our own Mel Molly Hennenberg joins us now with the very latest on his newest strategy. Hi, Molly. For can American voters to give him a chance to listen to his economic message, to see him as a businessman and an outsider who can revitalize struggling cities such as Detroit and improve their lives. That was part of his message yesterday at an African American church. And today, some of Trump's most vocal supporters were glad to hear it. I think Donald Trump is the first Republican since Jack Kemp and me to go into minority poor communities and say, the Democrats have failed you for 50 years, and you are reflexively giving them your vote, and they're going from bad to worse. I mean, food stamps have gone up two and a half times. So I, under, I, I, under, I, food stamps have gone up two and a half times under Barack Obama. Recent Republican presidential candidates have not done well with African-American voters. John McCain in 2008, for example, got 4 percent of the vote. Mitt Romney in 2012 got 6 percent of the African-American vote. Trump is trying to improve those numbers, and he told the congregation yesterday that, in part, he just wanted to listen to them. I'm here today to learn so that we can together remedy injustice in any form and so that we can also remedy economics so that the African-American community can benefit economically. Through jobs and income, he added. Trump, in his economic message to Great Faith Ministries Church, says he wants to bring jobs back to Detroit and make that city, quote, the economic envy of the world. Elizabeth? All right, Molly Hennenberg reporting live. Molly, thank you so much. Great to see you. Thanks. Here for a closer look at Trump's minority outreach, let's break it down with our panel. Blaine Winship is the author of Moral Nomics and radio show host, member of the Virginia State Representative, Mark Levine joins us. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Mark, I want to start with you because I think I know uh, Blaine's, Blaine's reaction to this. I, want to, I, I, I know you watched yesterday when we saw Donald Trump in Detroit. Do you feel as if that was insincere and fleeting or do you feel as if that was a genuine outreach effort and was it effective? Well, you know, I don't really care what his campaign has to say to black people. Remember, he asked for the questions in advance. He needed to know the questions in advance. His campaign wrote the answers, and apparently that may not Donald be Trump can read that from a unique, script. Though. I mean, that for well, politicians. Well, it generally is. I mean, this is a guy, remember, who at the beginning of his showing up on the national stage, he's being investigated by the Justice Department because he won't rent his apartments to blacks. He's the king of the birther movement. Just a few weeks ago, Mark, he said if that we're most talking blacks. about investigations. I'm not sure you want to go there. Well, I think I do because he signed a settlement, which suggests to me that. That uh, listen to some of the people who he wouldn't rent apartments to. But but more recently, he's accusing the majority of black people of living in poverty and not having jobs. He doesn't know anything about the American black community. By the way, here's a hint: most of them have jobs, and most of them are not on welfare, and most of them just want a better life. And that's something that Hillary Clinton can give. She is giving, for example, free college to people who earn $125,000 or less. Uh, she's providing an increase in the minimum wage. That's something that helps blacks and whites. And Donald Trump, he's really very late to the stage here. Okay. All right, Blaine, I want to get your reaction to that. I'm not sure that Blaine can hear us. Blaine, can you hear us? Is a conversation just between me and Mark? I think it's a conversation. I think it's a conversation just between me and Mark. So, Mark, <laughs> let's continue because I think we actually had a nice, uh, a nice Sorry about rapport, that. if you will. Okay, I want to play a soundbite for you I'll, as we all try to recover from this, and it's from Dr. Ben Carson. He had an exclusive with Fox News Sunday's Chris Wallace this morning. I want you to listen to the soundbite, and then I want to ask you a question. Take a listen. Traditionally, the uh, the Republican Party has not made an extensive outreach to certain communities, including the African American community, uh, because they've pretty much written that off as uh, Democrat territory. Uh, Donald Trump is changing that narrative and is really starting to talk about this in a very serious way. And I've had many discussions with him about it. 
Okay, I, Blaine, I think you can hear us, but I do want to pose this question to Mark because we were having such a nice conversation. You heard there Dr. Carson say, listen, he's changing the narrative. So that's, that's a direct rebuttal to what you said when you were saying he hasn't been doing this. Well, he is now. He is trying. Well, he doesn't have a specific proposal. I heard him say he was going to remedy economics. I don't know what that means. Hillary Clinton wants to raise the minimum wage. Hillary Clinton wants to make college affordable for people who make under $125,000. These are specific, concrete proposals that help blacks and whites, and Donald Trump just gives a bunch of pablum that his campaign manager wrote for him. All right, Blaine, I want you to respond to that because, in fact, we heard Donald Trump lay out some specifics, and specifically for Detroit. What's your reaction to Mark? Tell me this is not happening. All right. Okay, so we still do not have Blaine. So, Mark, I'm going to go back to you. I just... feel bad here. It's not fair and balanced. It's not fair. Well, I'm doing the best I can here. I know you are. All right, so I want to ask you uh, another question. This was my, my, my third topic here, was that we heard from a lot of voters in Detroit, and they said, listen, this is generational. We've been voting up and down the Democratic ticket for years. Our parents have been doing it. Our grandparents have been doing it. That means that Donald Trump has to really change the hearts and minds of the voters, not only in Detroit, but across the country. Do you think he can do that. I think it's actually broader than Donald Trump. I think it's the Republican Party. All you have to do is look at North Carolina, for example, that designed voting laws to keep blacks from voting and was called out by the Fourth Circuit for specifically finding ways to keep blacks from voting. Why would blacks want to vote for a party that wants to keep them from voting? We're not doing that. That's something that uh, Democrats uh, obviously support. And I think if Republicans would come around and support equal rights for blacks, support blacks voting, support things like giving people a chance to have equal opportunity to go to college. Uh, these are things that would bring black voters around. But just saying, blacks, you live in poverty, you should try something different, that's an attack on black people, the majority of whom don't live in poverty. And it's also not a concrete solution, the kind that Hillary Clinton offers. All right. Well, Mark, I, I'm so gracious to you for dealing with all the technical <laughs> errors. It wasn't quite fair and balanced, but we did the best we could. I and know we you hope did. to Thank have you. you back. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Elizabeth. And coming up, a woman already.